Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, I want to make a video today on planting decisions. Uh, to me, planting is the most important decision as an organic farmer that you're going to make. Uh, basically, planting, uh, the decision and the moment in time when you plant is a nexus. There's a whole bunch of things that come together at that point, and there's a whole bunch of things uh, that you control after that point. But most of the decisions and most of your success as an organic farmer is going to be decided before you pull the planter out of the barn. Uh, basically, there's three variables that control yield. Uh, you have moisture, you have weed control, and you have fertility. So in fertility, all of the fertility decisions that I am going to make on this field have been done previous to this point in time. Uh, the cover crop, grazing cows, spreading manure, spreading the lime, spreading gypsum. As an organic farmer, those decisions on the fertility have been made before now. Uh, there are some farmers that side dress some products, fish emulsion and this and that. I do not do that. Everything that I do for fertility is before the planter runs. Uh, the other two things are weed control and moisture. Uh, your decisions with those two interact with each other. So that brings us out here today. Uh, if Deborah will look over there at the cornfield, there's a cornfield where I showed you the disc running. Where we're at right here is a soybean field where I did one pass with the disc. Uh, the ground was so dry and mellow that I have the seed bed that you see in front of us. It's relatively flat and it was bone dry. The soil worked perfectly. Uh, it was uh, droughty, droughty, droughty. Well, we're still kind of droughty. Uh, where we're at today, last week we had two inches of rain. And so you can see where I'm going here, where I've already run a little bit. I'm turning up good moisture in this loose soil. And you can see that we did get enough rain that the surface sealed down. And when the surface seals down, the moisture goes down rather than coming up. Uh, I would film outside the cab and show you the profile of all my little, the usual suspects. But out there we have morning glory, uh, velvet leaf, and foxtail. They have all started. The temperature's warm enough now. Uh, in this field, we do not have cuckleburrs. Uh, cuckleburrs. Uh, if you work the ground too wet, cuckleburrs will come from that, you know, two to three inch depth. Uh, they will come from a deeper depth, but uh, there's not enough moisture out here today, I do not think, uh, for the few cuckleburrs that are out here to come. Uh, the usual suspects I'm going to kill very readily, and they will be gone. So. They will not come back until we have another rainfall event. By fuel cultivating to a three inch depth, three, three and a half inch depth, I in effect dry the soil out and since they are shallow germinating weeds relatively, uh, they will not germinate until they get another rainfall event. So the decision to plant is always the hardest and, and uh, how I make it is looking at the weather. Uh, we had a neighbor, Larry Ketter, years ago, he said, if it's going to rain that night, put your planter in the barn. And what he was getting at there is the longer the interval is between when you plant and when uh, the next rain comes, that determines when the shallow uh, seeded weeds, the velvet leaf, uh, uh, pigweed, foxtail, and morning glory, that determines when they're going to come. And so the longer that interval is between the point in time when you plant and the point in time when you get the next rainfall event, the better chances are that you will have weed control. If you get, uh, you know, ideally I would like a seven day interval, a uh, four day interval is not bad. A two day interval can work if you have good conditions and the soil temperature is warm and the crop is really exploding and growing fast. Uh, the later in the year you are, the shorter that interval can be and you're still okay, able to recover. The cooler the temperature is, the longer that interval needs to be. So here we are, the first week of May. 
and that interval ideally needs to be spread out a little bit because the soil is not warm enough yet for the corn to explode in development. It'll, it'll move, but it won't be moving as fast as when we have 70 degree nights. Right now we have 50 degree nights and 80 degree days, so the corn will develop, but it will not move as fast as when we have 60 degree nights and 85 and 90 degree days. So anyway, we're still dry. I have decided to take the chance and plant on all of the, I'm planting corn today, on all of the bean ground. Uh, the rain was last week, so three and a half days after the rain, I started working the bean ground. I am going to let it set for another rainfall event. The corn, I'm going to go ahead and push uh, because of the dry weather and because of the lack of rain chances. Uh, and because the fields where I'm planting corn, I have relative uh, uh, low weed densities. I have pretty good weed control. Uh, timeliness of corn planting, it, it doesn't mean anything. The most important decisions that you can make on when to plant are the soil conditions. So you want the soil to be drying, you want an interval between the rainfall events, uh, you want to plant your seed into moisture. You want to have enough moisture that you can plant the seed into moisture. And uh, those are your big concerns for planting. So I'm going to run here with a little bit uh, with Field Cultivator. That has been a popular video. Go ahead and turn around there, honey, and show them the Field Cultivator. We're going to run a little bit on this field. Like I said, because of the dry weather, I have done one pass with the disc and now I'm coming back with the field cultivator and I'm going to run just a hair deeper than three. Remember what we're trying to accomplish here is to smooth the seed bed, kill the weeds, but not go any deeper because in this circumstance we're not trying to burn moisture. Uh, it's kind of a change-up for me. This whole year has been a change-up because historically where we're located at is the western edge of the Corn Belt, but we're typically in our spring tillage events, we're attempting to burn moisture and we're not trying to conserve it. Uh, our soils here more imitate Ohio or Illinois or Iowa. Uh, rather than the western part of Kansas that most people think of. So anyway, normally I'm trying to burn moisture. Well, this year I'm working on the other end of the spectrum and I'm trying to conserve moisture. One thing about just making one disc pass, these beans yielded very well last year. And so there are a few residue lumps out there. Uh, cows didn't get them or they didn't get worked down. Normally I would be trying to burn moisture and so I would have made two disc passes and the field would have been even smoother yet. So that's the field cultivator working. You're seeing my tilt there, you're seeing the soil really flowing. Okay guys, part two of the video, we're back in the same field. Uh, we're planting now. Uh, so many of the things that we do, uh, the term, the technical term is frame of reference, the colloquial term is school of hard knocks, and the common term is just experience, knowing what to do when and when to do what, how. So the reality of the situation is I've been farming organically my entire life for 30 years, and so I have a pretty good frame of reference. For me personally, my biggest problem was I used to fixate upon the calendar. I wanted my corn planted the first or second week of May. I wanted, you know, uh, I tried to control the situation rather than relaxing and going with the environment. So this year I do happen to be planting the first week of May corn. Everything's going good. But this is really an atypical year. Uh, last year I made the video of, plant, of combining the corn with the 410 and that's been a very uh, popular video. But that corn was actually planted the first week in June. 
Uh, last year I planted corn, the first week of May, one field, and uh, I planted uh, the rest of the corn that first week of June. And irony of ironies, all of the June planted corn yielded better. And the reason it yielded better was because it had better weed control. Uh, the fertility on the two fields was about the same. Uh, there might have been a little more fertility in the early field, uh, simply because I had spread manure right ahead of the corn. But one of the things that I have learned about spreading manure is that when you spread raw manure, it tends to give you a flush of weeds. And so that's one of the reasons that I like to plant, uh, or I like to spread manure ahead of a wheat crop instead of ahead of a corn crop. So I don't know if she can show it here or if you guys are noticing it, but all of my fields have these green grass buffers and the reason for that is turning around. If you're row crop farming, I hate to turn around on my field. Anywhere where I turn around and pack down the soil, that will be where uh, weeds come. You know, the same principle about packing seed in with the planter press wheels works for weeds and my tractor tires. So not only does that give me grazing and a buffer strip uh, for my cattle, etc., etc., but it gives me a place to turn around and helps me keep my fields looking super nice. It also gives some beneficial uh, habitat. But the whole purpose of the video today was planting decisions. When to plant. So if you look over here to the right a little bit, honey, you can see I'm turning up good moisture, but you go over there about 18 rows, a couple rounds, and the moisture is already gone. So that little bump there was a residue bump. And when it gets back to the planter, my notch disc openers just spit it out of the way and they plant perfectly. Anyway, we're losing our moisture here. Uh, I do have adequate moisture now. My planting depth is about two and a quarter or two and a half inches. Uh, because of the way my planter is set, those ridges are built, uh, according to the true soil surface, I am probably four or five inches deep. I am planting my seed into untilled ground, and so there's undisturbed moisture on that seed where he is setting. And the reason for that is, if you look back there and you see what those notched disc openers are doing, they are literally taking about two inches off the top of the soil. And if they take two inches off the top and put it between the rows, and your seed is planted two and a quarter inches deep, then from the true surface of the soil, you're already down four and a half inches. Uh, and remember, you saw me field cultivating here, I was only field cultivating three and a half inches deep. So that is one of the things I do to guarantee that I put my seed into moisture. The last thing I want to mention, guys, is that it's very important that you plant your seed into moisture. Uh, the Kinsey planter allows me to do that. My old planter did not allow me to do that all the time. It didn't have enough weight to cut through. Anyway, guys, that's a little bit on the things that are running through my mind when I'm making planting decisions. Thanks.